Hey guys, I am uh, looking to show you a little bit about doing a combo system. And um, there is such a thing as a piping layout where the contractor will uh, go from a meter to directly to the inside of the building with typical like, black iron. And a, a lot of times that's done that way just for the rigidity They'll bring it into a big manifold into maybe a, a mechanical room area and then they'll feed all the appliances directly from the manifold. So I, uh, in the image that you guys are seeing right now, what I've done is I've shown a system where we're showing your gas meter here. We're gonna feed black iron directly into a manifold system inside the building is what we'll do. From this manifold system that I'm circling, this every one of these uh, little dash lines are going to represent the length going out to another to another appliance using what they call corrugated stainless steel tubing, or CSST. Um, I'm going to do this as a very typical system where I'll feed the building at seven inches, and I'm going to use a very kind of a typical pressure drop of the 0.5 uh, inch water column pressure drop. I'll use a very basic 1000 BTU per cubic foot and uh, set it up that way, just like all the description shows in this problem. Now, leaving, um, so there are a lot of similarities um, that we'll be using on here. And the other thing that's, that's new that you guys have not been exposed to, I'm gonna point this out, so what I did was I found um, in one vendor or one manufacturer of corrugated stainless steel tubing, and I went and found out what their equivalent hydraulic diameters are. So um, in, you might have remember me talking about the equivalent hydraulic diameter is a kind of a description, a description the way that they describe the, the diameter of the tubing for corrugated stainless steel tubing. And every manufacturer is, can be a, a little bit different. And the tubing, um, the corrugated stainless steel tubing can have a fairly high pressure drop. So you have to be a little bit careful uh, with that and make sure you do follow um, the correct tables and you understand what their diameter is when you're applying uh, this type of tubing in their applications. Um, there's other things that uh, pertain to the application of this, but. My general focus is going to be on the sizing uh, for this. So I want to show you a little bit on here. So for example, on a 3S tubing, um, they're going to have an equivalent hydraulic diameter of, of, of 13, half inch is 19, 23 for 3 quarter, 31 is a 1 inch, and then 37 is inch and a quarter. So in each of this, uh, so when we're looking in the code book specifically, um, I'm going to move it down to the corrugated the stainless steel section here. So let's see, right here. There we go. So in the code book, you're going to notice how they are now listing the equivalent size right here. And you'll notice uh, you might have caught that a little bit ago. I'm going to go back uh, to that. And you'll see how a half inch tube would be a 19. So let me go back to the worksheet, or back to the code book here, and that half inch is 19. Now you'll notice they also list a 15 and 18. They list 23, 25, and so on. Some of these are getting pretty close together. So just uh, I, I'm assuming that's from several manufacturers that make just a slight variation on their tubing. So nothing major, but just so you have to, you just want to be aware of it. You want to make sure we're looking at the right pressure. So in this problem, um, I happen to have it set up where I'm using less than 2 PSI. I've got a half inch pressure drop. I can tolerate that for this application and that's how I'm going to, I'll do, end up doing my sizing. Nice little system. So what I would suggest when you guys do this particular problem, um, one thing that I'm going to do is there's actually going to be two tables that you're going to need to do to solve this. That would be my suggestion. You don't have to, but that would be my suggestion. So 
being that we are going to use the black iron um, in this section right here, because they want to use black iron in this section and they're doing it primarily because of the, of the lower resistance, I think it makes logical sense for you guys to do this, is to go to uh, back to 621B. And in this particular case here, this would be logically what we would do because uh, it is going to be less than 2 PSI. It's a half, it's the right pressure drop. Everything all matches here. So we're in good, we're really good shape there uh, for that. But there is something I need to, to make you aware of. When you size this section, when you size that section that I'm identifying here, this section right in here, when you size this section, you've got to still make sure you're using your longest length method as I've outlined in here. So you want to use the longest length section to size that initial part using the black iron table, but then once you figure that size out, then disregard that table and go to the corrugated stainless steel table, but don't forget to include that extra 10 feet. So that 10 feet is going to have to get added to, let's just say, for example, if, if uh, just for whatever reason, let's say this is my longest run. So if that's the case, I would have to be adding the 10 plus another 20 plus whichever the next two are longer. So the five looks like they're both the same. So it'd be the five or the five, either one of those two. So in that case, my longest run would be the addition of of those uh, three distances there. That seems to be the longest one. And then from there, you just use your normal methods. You try to pick the right size and you go from there. It's a pretty nice little system. Um, going back to the table. Okay, so for this is the table that I figured we should use, which is that 6.20. And, and basically you're gonna Figure out, use the exact same methods for doing, uh, whether it's the branch length or the longest length method, you're gonna do the same practices. Uh, within this thing, you're going to get, um, you're gonna get the capacity in cubic feet. Oh. Okay, you're gonna get the capacity in cubic feet. You just have to figure everything out and you make sure you're using the right um, table column so make sure you're using whether it's a 19 or the 30 or 37 or whatever it happens to be make sure you pick the correct column otherwise uh, it could have an impact on the resistance of that system the CSST does have a lot more resistance um, it's much higher than all of the other types of piping materials that I can think about and um, and you just have to be prepared for that so that's a little bit on uh, how to do that particular type of a system.